The one thing that across the board in Tucson that people, even if they don't know anything about the loft, even if they think they've never been here, when you mention that we are the theater that shows Rocky Horror Picture Show, everyone remembers that. The Rocky Horror Picture Show. In 1972, the loft transitioned from basically a porn theater to an art cinema. The man who owned it gifted it to his daughter who really wanted to run an art theater. It used to be at Fremont and Sixth in a very funky space. Everybody who's ever was there will use that word. And then it moved here in 91. And then in 2000, there was a for sale sign up. I saw the sign go up and my heart stopped because I didn't think I wanted to live in Tucson anymore without the loft. It was too central to my life. My husband and I seriously considered moving. It took us two years to negotiate it, but we purchased the theater in November of 2002 and turned it into a nonprofit. We closed and got the keys and were the owners and had to start running it like that day. Not, there wasn't like a month of getting used to it, and it was sort of interesting. I was working at, at AZPM at the time. They say it's a 20-year plan that could well take that long to And I had been a journalist my whole life, so I knew little or nothing about running a business, so it was sort of baptism by fire. The first year, I calculated, I think, seven nights that I stayed up all night, because there was just so much to do and there were so few of us doing it. And when did you start feeling like? 2006. <laughs> Is that what you mean when we turned the corner and everything was fine? Yeah. I started sleeping? Yes. 2006. We had the a perfect storm of events. Catalina had closed, which was a big competition. We hired Jeff as program director, and we got Brokeback yeah, no, Mountain, no, which was, so until last year, our, our biggest it box office David. hit. I wish I knew how to quit you. <laughs> We never really have looked back. <laughs> it's a little overcast. A lot of the good stories that are the most gratifying to me actually come from our Kids Fest, which is an annual event every summer. Would you like some water? Ten days, free movies. I'm Jeff Yance. I'm the program director here at the Loft Cinema. Howdy, kids. Howdy, howdy. My name is Farmer Jeff. I often say that I'm the cruise director of the theater. What do you grow in your garden? Flowers. Flowers, come on. Come on, flower girl, come on. Please go join Shauna. A couple of years ago, I had a parent who had a couple of kids. The dad was just so thankful. He said, I can't afford to take my kids to see movies and they always feel left out because all their friends go to see movies and they don't get to. And the only time they get to is at your kids' fest. And he started crying and it was, it was, it was just really touching because it really lets you know that what you're doing is having an impact on people. Because that's what it's about. It's like, are you connecting with people? When we first opened, the Arizona Daily Star did a story, and they had a sidebar called, What is an Art Film? In the 70s, most every foreign film would have been considered an art film, but not so much anymore. It's a hard term to define. For me, um, it, the definition is, um, you know, if it's, if we show it. When you're looking for films for the theater, you're looking for films that speak to a wide audience. But then you're also looking for films that speak to specific communities. Also, quality is great if you can find great films. I do say that not every film that we show I don't love. But I think that's the trick is you're not programming for your own taste. And your taste is not everyone's taste. There have been films that I've been surprised that people did not like. Uh, one example was from about three years ago. It was a film called The Lobster. Would you like to dance? 
Mind if I join you? And it was a fairly big film. It got a lot of buzz, a lot of hype. It was at all the film festivals. I really liked it a lot. We showed it here, and I don't think I've ever had such divisive comments from our audience. A lobster is an excellent choice. Like people, a lot of people hated it. Like really, really hated it. My name is Adriana, and this is I'm Jessica. And we're here to see the farewell right over next door in their little garage. How often do you guys come to the loft? I'd say like a couple times a week. Yeah, at least once a week. Yeah, yeah we're the we're part of the uh, loft members, so yeah. we come quite often. Yeah. I think it adds to Tucson and like the film community or just people that just like to come out and like watch unique things. Yeah. It's definitely unique, just like I think the city of Tucson is unique within itself. So this just kind of adds to the flair of what Tucson is. I think The Loft is important because it really is a venue for alternative voices and alternative visions in terms of filmmaking. Most of these films that we show would not show on a movie screen in Tucson if we didn't bring them. I think films really offer a window into cultures that you may never have any contact with or experience with. So that's, that's part of our mission, like to find those kind of films, to give people that window into a broader perspective. The other thing I love about The Loft is it doesn't look like a chain. You've come into the loft and you know you're not at a corporate chain theater and you know you're not in Texas and you know you're not in California. It's pretty Tucson. You know, and I think that that local kind of funkiness of our theater is very specific to Tucson. In 2017, we, just, we finally got around to renovating Screen One. We were able to take that 500 seat, it was 20 rows of 25 seats. There were good things about it, but there were more bad things about it than good things. And the fact that the seats were so uncomfortable, most of them, they were like sitting on coat hangers. Um, and so we were able to do this major renovation from ceiling down. I mean, we, everything is new in there, except for the gold drapes. It's kind of going from coach to uh, uh, upgraded coach, not business class all the way, but you know, we don't, we'll never do that. Our model is more to focus on the, making the experience of seeing and hearing the film as good as, as it could possibly be. Actually, this is a signal of our success, I think, is that uh, we do not have enough screens to show all the films that we could be showing and to accommodate all the audiences we could be accommodating. So that's a real dream, is to add another screen or two. Things are so different today than they were in 2002. So many people are staying home and watching things on their iPads or their phones or their big TVs or whatever. There's nothing wrong with that, but people that leave their home and come here and the lights go down, the big screen lights up with the film, then that group of people is a community, you know, and they're sharing an experience. So I think it's more than a movie theater. It's a real kind of community space, which is really what we strive to be. It's just the best place in town for me. <laughs>